So in this session, we will be studying the blood supply of intestine, especially the arterial supply because there is a separate class called portal vein and portocaval anastomosis, which mainly deals with the uh, venous drainage of the uh, intestines. So let us go ahead. What are the parts of the intestine? If we see small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, and in large intestines, cecum and appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anal canal. So we are going to see the individual blood supply of all these parts. So in blood supply of intestine, if you see the duodenum, up to the middle of the second part of duodenum, it is developed from foregut. So it will be supplied by branches of the celiac trunk because the celiac trunk is the artery of the foregut. Lower half of the second part of duodenum to junction of right two-third and left one-third of the transverse colon is developed from midgut and the artery of midgut is superior mesenteric artery. And left one-third of transverse colon to rectum and alkanal hindgut. <coughs> so this will be supplied by inferior mesenteric artery. The celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, inferior mesenteric arteries are the ventral branches of the abdominal aorta. And again, abdominal aorta and inferior vena cava is a separate class. So, I am not going to describe the abdominal aorta under the classical description of arteries like origin, course, relations, branches, termination and applied aspects. So, I will be dealing only with the just introduction to the branches and I will go ahead with the blood supply of intestine. So, there is a separate class, abdominal aorta and inferior vena cava, where we will be dealing in detail about the abdominal aorta and inferior vena cava. So, let us see the branches of the abdominal aorta are categorized into Ventral branches, these are unpaid, as I said earlier, celiac trunk found at the level of T12, superior mesenteric artery at the level of lower part of L1 and inferior mesenteric artery at the L3 and then lateral branches are paid, inferior phrenic artery, middle suprarenal artery, renal artery and gonal artery, testicular in male and ovarian in female. So dorsal, if you see dorsal branches, four pairs of umbilic, sorry, four pairs of lumbar arteries and a median sacral artery. So, this is a direct downward continuation of the primitive dorsal aorta. Then, um, terminal branches are the right and left common iliac arteries. So, you can see here. So, this will be the celiac trunk, ventral branches, superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. You can see the lateral branches, inferior phrenic arteries, middle suprarenal artery, renal artery. And then, you can also see the gonadal artery. And here, you can see the median sacral artery and the terminal branches, common iliac arteries and you can see the lumbar arteries. So let us identify all these branches. So by the end of the abdomen and pelvis you will be able to identify all these branches but time being let us see. So this is a celiac trunk. You can see this is the left gastric artery. You can see this is the esophageal branch of the left gastric artery and this is the tortuous splenic artery. You can see this is the posterior gastric artery and these are the pancreatic branches. You can see this is the short gastric arteries. And this is the splenic artery proper and here you can see the left gastropipelic artery. And you can see this is the common hepatic artery. So you can see this is the right gastric artery, gastroduodenal artery and this will be the hepatic artery and this will be the cystic artery. And if you see this gastroduodenal artery, it will be giving right gastropipelic artery and superior pancreatico duodenal artery which divides into anterior and posterior pancreatico duodenal branches. Same way, this is the superior mesenteric artery. If you see on the left side, you can see the ileal and jejunal branches. And if you see on the right side, this is the um, inferior pancreatico duodenal artery, which again divides into anterior and posterior. So, anterior pancreatico duodenal artery from superior pancreatico duodenal artery and anterior pancreatico duodenal artery from inferior pancreatico duodenal artery both will anastomose and form an arcade. Same way, the posterior branches also will form an arcade and supply the duodenum as well as the head of the pancreas. And here you can see this is the middle colic artery dividing into right and left branches. So this is the right colic artery dividing into ascending and descending branches. This will be the iliocolic artery. You can see here. So this is giving rise to anterior cecal and posterior cecal and appendicular arteries. And there is an anastomotic branch which ascends up and anastomosis with the right colic. And there is a recurrent branch which continues with the superior mesenteric artery. And here if you see this is the inferior mesenteric artery. So this is the left colic artery dividing into ascending and descending branch. So these are the sigmoidal arteries, two to three sigmoidal, three to four sigmoidal arteries will be there. And uh, they will also divide into ascending and descending branches. And you can see this will be the superior rectal artery. This will be the recurrent branch of superior rectal artery. So if you start from here, so there is a continuous anastomotic channel from ileocecal junction 
to the rectosigmoid junction. So there is a continuous anastomotic channel. This is called as marginal artery of Drummond. Marginal artery of Drummond which supplies the large gut, supplies the major parts of the large gut. I will discuss in detail about the marginal artery. So then you can see this is the superior rectal artery, this will be the middle rectal artery, this will be the inferior rectal artery, this is internal iliac artery and this will be the internal pedendal artery. So these are all branches we are going to see by the time we finish the uh, dissection of the abdomen and pelvis. So let us see the blood supply of duodenum as you can see here. So this is the first part, this is the second part, this is the third part and this will be the fourth part. So this is the jejunum. As you see here, this is the gastroduodenal artery, right gastroepiplegic artery and superior pancreatic duodenal artery dividing into anterior posterior pancreatic duodenal arteries. So inferior pancreatic duodenal artery dividing into anterior posterior branches, both will form the anterior posterior pancreatic duodenal arcades from which arise the vasa recta to supply the duodenum. Additional branches are also there which we will discuss now. The upper half of the duodenum develops from the foregut and the lower half from the midgut. So therefore the arterial supply of the upper half is derived from the celiac trunk, artery of the foregut and that of the lower half from the pyramidocentric artery, artery of the midgut. So the different arteries of the duodenum derive directly or indirectly from the above two arteries. The first one will be the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. Earlier we have seen it is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery which is a branch from hepatic artery of the celiac trunk. Then inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, it is a branch of superior mesenteric artery. So each of above two arteries divided into anterior and posterior branches, respective branches of superior and inferior pancreatic duodenal arteries and anastomos to form anterior and posterior pancreatic duodenal arterial arcades. Each anastomotic arterial arcade gives off a row of vasa recta. The vasa recta of the anterior arcade supply the anterior surface and those of the posterior arcade supply the posterior surface of the duodenum. So between the two rows of vasa recta lies the head of the pancreas. Ultimately, they are going to supply the head of the pancreas also. So, you can see additional branches like branches from the hepatic artery. You can also see the branches from right gastroepiplegic artery. You can also see the branches from additional branch from gastroduodenal artery that is the supraduodenal artery of Wilkie. So, these are supplying the first part of the duodenum. <coughs> you can also see from the first jejunal branch there is a recurrent branch supplying the fourth part of the duodenum. So, let us see. Supraduodenal artery of Wilkie, usually it is a branch of gastroduodenal artery which is branch from celiac trunk and supplies the anterior superior and posterior superior supplies of the first part. Retroduodenal branches of the gastroduodenal artery, branches of the hepatic artery, branches from the right gastroepiplegic artery and artery from the first duodenal branch of the supramesenteric artery. It supplies branches to the fourth part of the duodenum. So blood supply of ileum and jejunum. The jejunum and the ileum are supplied by jejunal and ileal branches 12 to 15 in number of the supramesenteric artery. They arise from left side of the supramesenteric artery and enter the mesentery to reach the intestine. The terminal part of the ileum is supplied by the ileal branches of ileocolic branch of the superior mesenteric artery. So if you see here, you can see the uh, jejunal and ileal branches entering into the mesentery and continuously forming arterial arcades. The number of arcades are less with respect to jejunum but as we go towards the terminal part of the ileum, the number of arterial arcades are increasing more. That means in the jejunal part, if you see less number of arcades, and long vasa recta. If you see in the ileum, more number of arcades and short vasa recta will be present. As soon as these enter the mesentery, they break up into smaller branches which anastomose with each other to form a series of arterial arcades which are more complex in ileum than in the jejunum. From the convexities of terminal arcades, small parallel striped vessels called vasa recta arise and pass to the mesenteric border of the gut to be distributed alternatively to the opposite surface of the small intestine. So from the convexities, vasa recta will arise and pass to the mesenteric border of the gut to be distributed alternatively to the opposite surface of the small intestine. So the anastomosis between the vasa recta is poor. You can see here from the beginning of the small intestine to the end of the small intestine, if you see the number of arterial arcades will keep on increasing and the length of the vasa recta will keep on decreasing. So blood supply of cecum and appendix. So this is the beginning of the small inter large intestine. The cecum is supplied by the anterior and posterior cecal branches of the ileocolic artery, a branch of the superior mesenteric artery. So cecum is supplied by anterior and posterior cecal branches of the ileocolic artery. It is a branch from the superior mesenteric artery. And the appendix is supplied by a single appendicular artery, which is a branch of inferior division of the ileocolic artery. So it passes, this appendicular artery passes behind the terminal part of the ileum to enter the meso appendix and runs in its free margin to reach the tip of the appendix. So, which is the least vascular part. The appendicular artery is an end artery. So, when the meso appendix is short, the appendicular artery rests directly on the appendicular wall near the tip of the appendix. So, when the meso appendix is short, 
the appendicular artery rests directly on the appendicular wall near the tip of the appendix. So in appendicitis, this part of the artery is affected and thrombosed leading to gangrenous change in the tip which may perforate. So once this uh, tip of the appendix perforates, whatever contents are there inside the appendix that will fall into the peritoneal cavity and they trigger a severe reaction called peritonitis which will be life threatening. So you can see here, this is the superior ileocecal fold with the anterior cecal artery. You can also see the inferior ileocecal fold. Okay. <clears throat> you can see this is the meso appendix with the appendicular artery. So blood supply of large cut. So it is mainly by the marginal artery of Drummond. So the artery of Drummond is an arterial arcade formed by an anastomosis between the distal branches of the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. It is a circumferential anastomotic arterial channel extending from the ileocecal junction to the recto sigmoid junction. It is located close to the inner margin of the colon, approximately 3 cm. It is formed by anastomosis between the branches of um, superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. The vasa recta arise from the marginal artery and supply the colon. You can see here. This is the superior mesenteric artery, this is the middle colic artery from superior mesenteric artery and this is the right colic artery from the superior mesenteric artery and this is the ileocecal colic artery from the superior mesenteric artery, this is the left colic artery and these are the sigmoidal branches and this is the superior rectal artery. So if you see all the branches are dividing into two branches and astomosing with the neighboring vessels forming the marginal artery of Drummond. So sometimes at the splenic flexure, this anastomosis might be absent and there might be a anastomosis between the ascending branch of the left colic artery and the trunk of the middle colic artery or sometimes there might be a direct anastomosis between the inferior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric arterial trunks. So these kind of anastomosis are called as arc of rylon, arc of rylon. So earlier they also had a critical point here. So this is called as critical point of Sudek where the anastomosis between the uh, superior rectal artery and the last sigmoidal artery will be absent. So that is called as critical point of Sudek. But now the main critical point is the splenic flexure where the anastomosis between the uh, left colic and the middle colic artery is absent. So you can see here this is the marginal artery of Drummond. You can see these are the vasa longa and these are the vasa brevia supplying the colon. So critical point of colon, it lies at the level of splenic flexure. At this level, the ascending branch of the left colic artery often fails to anastomose with the left branch of the middle colic artery. However, there is anastomotic channel between the main trunk of the middle colic and the ascending branch of the left colic artery called as arc of rylan or this arc of rylan may be present between the trunks of superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. So if this anastomosis is not well developed, the arterial supply of the splenic flexure is geopodized and splenic flexure undergoes ischemic changes. Earlier it was thought that the critical point of colon is on the sigmoid colon which is called as critical point of sudoc where the anastomosis between sigmoidal branches of inferior and inferior mesenteric and superior rectal arteries was thought to be deficient. So blood supply of sigmoid colon it is mainly by 3 to 4 sigmoidal arteries which are branches from inferior mesenteric artery and a recurrent branch from superior rectal artery. So it, it is between the last sigmoidal artery and the recurrent branch of superior rectal artery. If this anastomosis is absent we call it as critical point of sudoc see here so if this anastomosis is absent we call it as this area as a critical point of sudoc <coughs> now you can see the blood supply of rectum and anal canal the rectum is supplied by superior rectal artery which is the chief artery of the rectum it's a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery itself then middle rectal artery two in number each is a branch from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery so inferior rectal artery again two in number each is a branch from internal pudendal artery so median sacral artery it's a branch of abdominal aorta Anal canal, the upper part of anal canal is supplied with superior rectal artery and the lower part of the anal canal is supplied by the inferior rectal artery. You can see here, this is a superior rectal artery which is single, which is a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery, dividing into two branches to both sides. You can see the middle rectal artery arising from internal iliac artery and inferior rectal artery which will be arising from the internal pudendal artery. Thank you.